Welcome back for the third and final video on building a website with HTML and CSS. We have already, in the first two videos, built out this site, the basic mobile version. We've got our HTML, we've got our CSS to get it looking pretty much like the design. What we do have now is to tackle the desktop view because it is a little bit different than the mobile view. Uh, so let's start just in seeing what are the things that are different here that we're gonna have to tackle. Uh, actually, the designer has told us that the whole font size of the whole page is gonna increase 140%. Also, there's gonna be more space on the left and the right of these sections. It's gonna be 10% padding. Uh, we can also observe that there is extra padding in the table. And the big difference that's going to be tricky is in the mobile view, the image is beneath the text in this section, but in the desktop view, the image is beside the text in this section. So we'll have to figure out how to make that work. Okay, so let's start with the easy stuff. Let's start with the, the font size and the padding. All right. So in our reference sheet, we can see that we're going to be using, let's see, the media queries is the right tool for the job to trigger certain CSS styles to happen only on the larger screen size. So here's an example of a media query. We can kind of work from this and tweak it for our own purposes. So I'm going to copy that over to my code. It's a good idea to put your media queries at the bottom just because that lets them appropriately override um, or rather easily override any styles that you had above. Okay, so we don't need to rewrite all of the styles. We only need to rewrite the ones that are going to change. Um, I'm also going to change this 768. That's going to be the point at which these new styles or these additional styles apply. I'll show you that uh, in a second. But uh, what did we say? We're saying we're going to change the font size. So I'm going to change the font size on the body to 140%, that's what my designer told me. Uh, so we should actually be able to see that right now. This style will trigger as soon as my screen is this large or larger. So if we go back to our page, uh, the easiest way to demo this is, if you have your dev tools open, you can kind of drag the border here to define the size of your page. And as you drag it, you do see at the top um, that it is showing the width of the page. So right now it's less than 768, but as I cross that border between 768, you'll see the font size jump up. Here we go. There you go. So you can see that once I've gotten to here, I'm at 830, wow. It has the larger font size. So let's go ahead and switch back and make the other adjustments. So we want the sections um, for mobile, our sections have a padding of 32, but for desktop, these larger screen sizes, we're going to change that. We're going to override that to um, padding left 10%, padding right 10%. Okay, so there's that extra padding, but when you make it smaller, you don't have that extra padding. Okay, uh, let's see, I believe we also need to, what else needs to change here? We want some extra padding on these cells. That's gonna look like another rule. Our THs, padding, change the padding left to 1.2 EM and the padding right to that as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for our TDs. All right, let's see what that did. Um, actually, I'm gonna close my my dev tools and I can actually just 
resize the window. That's a little bit smoother right now. So on the smaller size, we got the small padding and then 768, we have the larger padding. So that's working very nicely. All right, last thing we wanna tackle is this situation where this image and the text should be side by side in the desktop view. So we're gonna be using our media query again, but uh, this time we also need to bring in some way to change the orientation of this section. And that's where Flexbox will come in really handy. All right, let's try it out for starters. Uh, we need to, when, when we work with Flexbox, uh, here is the, the section that contains our big text paragraph and our image. So uh, we need to make sure that we are only working with this section. So I'm gonna add another class. Um, side by side container. Okay. Notice that you can add multiple classes to an HTML element by putting a space between them in the class attribute. So we can target this particular class for the container that goes outside of the two items that are gonna be side by side. So when you work with Flexbox, you need to remember there are there's a container that goes around it and there's the individual items on the inside. So we're going to take our side by side container and set it to display flex. Okay, let's go see what that looks like. Wow, that already put them side by side, just that one change. But uh, let's look at it a little bit more closely, to understand it better. Um, here in the cheat sheet, we do have a Flexbox properties section, and we will see that all of these properties do apply to the parent container, that section that we're styling right now. And let's have a look. We did the display flex already, that just kind of enabled Flexbox. There are a few other options we can play with, flex direction, justify content, and align items, which I think we will want to actually tweak some of those. So let's try them out. Flex direction, let's try flex direction first. Um, I'm just gonna play with it here in the dev tools. Uh, first of all, so inspect, have a look at that section. And let's add a flex direction to it. So right now it's using the default flex direction, which is row. And that causes the content to be aligned from left, uh, in our case, to right. It follows the natural direction of reading uh, for the language on the page, which in this case is English, so it's gonna go left to right. I can change that direction to Row reverse, for example, and you can see that now it goes text for text on the right first, and then image on the left. We could also try um, column, which gets us back to our alignment here, uh, or column reverse would flip them. So we would be able to use this flex direction to choose how they're arranged, uh, but right now. Row is what we want. That gives us the look we want. And as it turns out, row is already um, the default. So we don't even need to specify that because it's default. Okay, what else can we try? Um, we have justify content and align items. So this one controls the alignment in the direction of flow. And this one controls the alignment perpendicular to flow. So flow is see here if we can. Yep, flow is this way, following the row, left to right right now. If we had used direction column, then flow would have been from top to bottom, but flow is kind of the direction that we've chosen in our flex direction property. So um, what I notice here is that the alignment of this, it's kind of stretching out our unicorn, which I don't really want in the design. Uh, the unicorn stays in its correct aspect ratio. So 
I believe that is because the default align items is stretch. So it's stretching that image to fit. But we have a few other options. We have start, which puts it up there. We have end. Actually, I think it's supposed to be flex start and flex end. Uh, what I really want is just to center it. There we go. That looks like our, our diagram. Well, it's hard to tell, but that's the, that's the intention here, to center it. So I do need to have this align item center it. Without it, it's going to stretch it, which I don't want. Okay. So we can leave that. We can leave the flex direction row, and we'll add the align items center. So I'll copy that from here and make it permanent in my Visual Studio code. Save that. Refresh the page, make sure that it's all cleared out. Good. So now it stays centered. Okay. So that's pretty much it. There's one little thing I want to tweak here as a last item, and that is that here you can see that the, the image kind of stays the right shape, and the text, uh, if I close this, the text is stretching to fit. But in the design, uh, the text is always staying 50% on the left, and the image is 50% on the right. So I'm going to play a little trick here, not really a trick, a little technique that we're going to use here. And that is, I'm going to go back to my HTML. I'm going to put a class on this one. Side-by-side -side item. Okay, so side-by-side -side item. I added that class so that I can target those two items in my side-by-side -side container specifically. Oh, that did not work. Okay. And I'm going to say width 50%. Okay, that will give me the equal um, equal halves. This one's 50% width. This one's 50% width. So that's good, um, except now we've broken something else because the unicorn is actually supposed to stay the same size. It's not meant to grow. So right now we're saying this unicorn will always be 50% of the size. So when the page is larger, the unicorn gets larger. Um, this is going to require um, definitely a little interesting uh, a technique here. So what I'm going to do is... Let's go and look at let me draw on here a little bit. So sometimes you have to get a little creative uh, when you are there we go uh, working with HTML and CSS to make these pages. So here is our section. It does have a little bit of padding on the edges, remember. So here's really our section content. Inside of that Half on the one side, I have half of it is this paragraph. On the other side, I have half of it right now is the image. But here's what I can do. I can say, okay, half of it is this space. But then inside of that space is where the image ends up getting centered. So we're going to center that image inside of this space, which means we need another container to make up the space. And I'm just going to use a div that is just kind of a nondescript general purpose container that I can use um, to, wow, well, that's, okay, there we go. Uh, general purpose container that I can use to mark off a section and uh, manipulate the contents of that section. So I'm actually going to go ahead and in my HTML add an extra element just to provide the structure that I need. I'm going to put that around the image. And now that's going to be my side-by-side -side item. 
So save that. And let's go look at our result. Okay, good. So now we can see that our unicorn is staying the same size, even though the page gets larger and smaller. And one way to see that is to inspect I'm going to put my inspector down here on the bottom. Um, and now we'll see if we highlight that image, the image is only taking up that much space. And no matter how big or small the page is, that image will still just take up that much space. Around that image, we do have the div. And you can see that the div is an invisible box that is taking up that 50%. It's kind of making everything fit. So sometimes you will need to do that. Sometimes you will need to add extra elements to your design uh, just to make things fit the way you want. That's a, a legitimate HTML and CSS design tactic. Okay, well, there it is. We have accomplished the design. It looks great in desktop looks great in a mobile view. So thanks for watching. You can see that it does take a little bit of patience to build a web page and it'll be a, a good learning experience as you uh, look through all of the different properties that you might want to use from our cheat sheet. Uh, you'll probably need to search online for a lot of things as well things that are not in the cheat sheet or things that you need more, you know, more information about that our sheet, cheat sheet doesn't really give all of the, all the, the details that you need. So go enjoy your newfound power of being able to create websites with HTML and CSS. See you later.